this episode of Velocity Labs, we're having some fun and putting the stock 14B turbo back on the Eclipse. Wait, that's not fun at all. This car has been sitting in my garage space for way too long. So we're going to go ahead and send the blown 20G turbo that's on the car in for a rebuild. And because the blown turbo was dumping oil into the lower intercooler piping, we're going to need to take off the front mount intercooler and clean that out as well. To do that, the front bumper has to come off. Take off all the front lights and then remove all the 10 millimeter bolts on the top of the bumper. Then there's a few more 10 mil bolts on the side, or in my case, zip ties. Remove those and then you should be able to get the bumper cover off. Unless your car is stock, in which case there's going to be a bunch more bolts along the bottom as well. Now let's move up to the engine bay and remove the intake snorkel. And while we're there, we'll get rid of the heat shields as well. By the way, if you want your heat shields looking this shiny, I got a video for that. Now that those are out of the way, let's pop the J-pipe off. J-pipe obviously stands for JDM is f Now we can see our dirty blown 20G turbo with the intercooler pipe full of oil. Now let's disconnect the downpipe from the O2 housing. We'll also need to get some of my DIY air ducting out of the way. Now we can get those bolts off the downpipe. The oil needs to get drained to remove the turbo, so we'll do that next. Once the oil is drained, we can also remove the oil drain line from the turbo. There's actually two different ways to disconnect this. It really doesn't matter which way you do it. But for reinstall, installing the oil drain line on the turbo first is usually easiest. While we're on oil connections, we might as well get the oil feed line next. And then we'll start getting the water lines. And if you're smarter than I am, you'll drain your coolant before you start on the water lines. Start to pee, then I get a bucket. And remember what I said about being smart? Yeah, that's not me. I might have spilled just a little bit. But let's not pay attention to that. Let's just keep disconnecting stuff. And let's disconnect the coolant feed next. Mine was pretty jammed on there, so I needed to cut a little off the end first. Next, we'll get the wideband or the, uh, the O2 sensor if you're running stock. Now, for some reason, I was thinking I could get the turbo out without taking the manifold off, so I took the manifold to turbo bolts off next. I don't know, it's like 3 a.m. at this point, and this is the first of many goofs I did while swapping the turbo. I mean, this really isn't so much as a goof as a weird way to do it, because the manifold's gotta come off anyway. Uh, it's just kind of a weird way to do it, but there's definitely more goofs later. So, normally to get the exhaust manifold off, you have to move the power steering pump out of the way to get at this corner bolt. But when I had the head off my car and I was putting my ARP head studs in and I was also changing the head gasket, I grabbed the old cutoff wheel of death and chopped off the big bracket that's normally in the way. Now I can get to this bolt without taking off the power steering pump, which is rad. I highly recommend this mod if you have your head off. Anyway, once the manifold is off, then we can get the whole turbo assembly out. Hooray, half done. Next, we need to break down the turbo so we can send it in for a rebuild. I'm going to need a lot of the parts off of it while it's getting rebuilt, so it needs to get taken apart. I still need the oil and water lines, the O2 housing, the wastegate actuator, the turbine housing, and a few other things. Now it's ready to be split apart, so I'm marking how it's clocked. Although, there should be a pin here that only allows one way that you can have this clocked, but I like marking stuff just in case. Perfect. Now we can box this thing up and ship it off to get rebuilt. Alright, so what turbo do we want back on here? Small 16G? I have one that's freshly rebuilt, but I wanted to sell that one. Stock 14B? Yeah, that's an option. We also have this one over here. Nope, 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 nope. We're not ready for that one yet. I think we'll slap the stock 14B back on there for now. This thing is filthy though, and even though it's only temporary, my CDO won't let me put this thing back on the car looking so gross. So let's clean it up first. Oh, and what CDO you ask? It's kind of like OCD, but it's in alphabetical order like it should be. Stop, 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 st
scrub, 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 I should get at least 10 horsepower for that level of cleanliness. This stock six centimeter turbine housing isn't gonna work for me either. So let's slap on that nice ported seven centimeter housing. I'll probably port out this six centimeter housing out later. These can really get stuck on there. They essentially weld themselves to the turbo after 100,000 miles of 1500 degree heat cycles. Just keep giving it little love taps and it will break free eventually. And I do mean gentle. You don't wanna wail on this thing and screw something up. But the new, or I guess old, turbine housing back on, and then we can get the rest of the car cleaned up and ready for reassembly. We need to pop the front mount off to clean out any oil that may have gotten into it. Take the bumper off and undo the brackets and the couplers, and then we can pop the intercooler off. And, huh. I figured there would be a ton of oil in here, but it actually looks clean. Although, as soon as the turbo blew, I stopped driving it, so that probably helped. There was quite a bit of oil in the lower pipe, though. Luckily, it dips low right at the bottom of the J-pipe, so the oil pooled up there instead of getting into the intercooler. So we got lucky there. We got that cleaned up and put back together, and now it's time to eliminate some exhaust leaks. I've been dealing with a few minor exhaust leaks. Well, not really dealing. I've been putting up with a few minor exhaust leaks over the past year and a half or two, so I picked up a big belt sander on Craigslist so I can flatten everything out. This is my first time using it, and I'm pretty much in love. All we have to do is just turn it on, hold the piece in place and let the belt sander do all the hard work. Just look at that, so shiny. Any part that doesn't come clean right away indicates a low spot, which indicates exhaust sneaking out where it shouldn't be. Just keep going until it's perfectly flat. I did the exhaust manifold first. Once that was done, I moved on to the O2 housing. I know this thing had some issues because I could actually see the exhaust leak here when I did the seafoam smoke show to find them. This one took a lot of work. The biggest problem area was here along the bottom. You can clearly see the evidence of exhaust exiting where it shouldn't be. I worked on flattening out this section for like a good 10 minutes before it was completely smooth. Finally, nice and flat. Look at how much extra surface area was sticking out where it shouldn't have been. I'm stoked to finally have this flat. And at least the downpipe flange was nice and flat. That took all of 10 seconds to do. I also did the turbine housing, which only had a few small issues. Awesome, that looks perfect. Let's get this thing reassembled. I always like to use a little bit of copper anti-seize on the exhaust components to make sure they come apart easily the next time I do this. And it's a DSM, so you know it's gonna happen eventually. And I just put the manifold on backwards. Shit, I definitely just put this on backwards. Good job, me, way to pay attention. Remember those screw ups I mentioned earlier? This is just one of many. <sighs> Flip it around and try again. Next, we'll throw the wastegate actuator back on do the oil drain. Be sure to get new gaskets for these. Oil leaks are not fun. I ended up putting the oil drain on facing the wrong way as well. So I ended up doing that twice. Fun. Oh, and then I forgot to put the rear water line on. So I had to take the whole assembly off once again. Double the fun. Then to add even more fun, when I was hooking up the front water line, I just grabbed my biggest 22 millimeter wrench and started honking the bolt down. And guess what that leads to? Oh, f Yeah, this thing only needs about 30 foot-pounds of torque. So this is why we pay attention to torque specs. So you don't do this to your water bolt. That sucks. Luckily, I have another water bolt lying around somewhere. Um, so I'm just gonna have to go find that and dig it out. But uh, I have to get this out of there first. Yep, good job, Hulk. You really showed that bolt to his boss. All right, so I got pretty lucky. What I did is uh, I just took a big flathead screwdriver and just kind of tapped it in with my hammer so it was nice and tight and uh, got it turning pretty easily. So I looked out there. So we had to take the whole turbo assembly off again, extract the bolt, and then put the whole assembly back on again. All right, got everything backed in again. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do this properly this time with the torque wrench. Um, the water bolt is 35 to 50 if I remember correctly. I'm gonna start at 30 and um, I'm not gonna tighten it down unless it's actually leaking uh, any more than that. So we're just gonna go to 30, make sure we don't break this thing. Okay, now it's snug. That's it. 
That's 30. Maybe we'll go 35. We'll go to the minimum. So obviously not a lot of torque needed on this bolt. And <laughs> I was really, really honking on it. Oops. All right, so here's 35. Yeah, that's it. That's probably all that bolt takes. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And if it's leaking, we'll go ahead and snug it up more. After all that, we can finally get the fluids filled back up, get the exhaust hooked back up, and make sure everything is working properly before we start reassembling the front end. Everything looks good, so we pop the front bumper back on, make sure everything is snugged down nice and tight, and we're done. All right, we're finally back up and running again with the Eclipse. Although we're back down to about 280 wheel horsepower, I know that because I actually dynoed the car before I put the 20G turbo on. And I'm pretty sure I was around 360 wheel horsepower with that 20G turbo that I just blew up. Unfortunately, I guess we'll never know since I never made it to the dyno. Anyway, the Eclipse needs new tires, so next episode I think we'll have a little fun.